Okay, hi again, Science30. So we are going to uh, continue our discussion of DNA and then more specifically protein synthesis in that DNA. Um, and so we're going to talk about how proteins are made by a process called translation of taking a, a codon or basically D sections of three base pairs of DNA and code them into an amino acid sequence, which will then make a protein. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it, it is, but it's not. I can use a table of, uh, and then the, ideally by the end of this you'll want to be able to use a table of DNA to match um, which triplet codes for what amino acid. And so basically, before we get into anything specific, you have uh, three base pairs in DNA. DNA likes to read in bases in sections of three. And so you've got three pairs or three codons of DNA and it's going to assign itself to a specific amino acid and as the amino acids get attached to each other based off of what the DNA reads, so the DNA here is going to read a certain number of codons, whichever codons are here, like CGG for example is going to say okay we want to bring arginine in, CUU is going to bring an amino acid called leucine in, AAG on the DNA um, strand is going to bring a amino acid called lysine in, and then arginine and then tyrosine and then maybe these five are going to stop and we're going to make a protein for um, skin cells. And so we know which amino acid we're going to end up using because amino acids are coded by three nitrogen bases on a DNA molecule and that three nitrogen base is called a triplet. And so the triplets you read using a, a, a base pair table. Now I do want to just iterate, if you are a Science 30 student in the Alberta curriculum, you are going to be using this table. It looks very similar to another table, um, but it's titled DNA Base Triplets and their corresponding amino acids. In Science 30, we use the DNA Base Triplets. This isn't actually correct. Um, in Biology 30, so if you're a biology student or in a genetics course watching this video, do not use this table because that's supposed to be an mRNA table, which is technically more correct. In the Alberta Science 30 curriculum, we don't go into what mRNA is in any great detail, and so we discuss our codons based off of DNA triplets. Okay, So if you're a biology or genetics course student, do not use this table, but for Science 30 in the Alberta curriculum, we are going to use this table. And so these are the DNA base triplets and their corresponding amino acids. So I have, uh, let's say I have um, a table in front of me. I'm going to use the left-hand side of the table and the top of the table and the right-hand side of the table to help me read what letters I have. So let's say my amino acid is, um, let's say it is T C. T. So if my amino acid is TCT, I'm going to take my first letter, T, and I'm going to go on the left where it says first. This is only half the table, by the way. It's been cut off here for the picture. So I'm going to go on the left, T. Now I'm going to go to the second base pair at the top. My second base pair is C, so I'm going to go to the C section. So I have T and C. So all of these in this box have the first letter T and the second letter C. My third letter, letter was T again, so I'm going to find TCT, so this guy right here. And that codes for an amino acid called serine. And so serine is the amino acid that I'm going to code with the DNA triplet TCT. So now I'm going to use um, this very same uh, amino acid uh, sequence, and I'm going to code using this table the following. Um, if you have a full table in front of you or you Google a full table, you'll be able to accomplish all of this, but you'll find that TAC codes for tyrosine, CCG codes for proline, GCA codes for alanine, serine, isoleucine, alanine, and then probably hidden by my webcam photo here is isoleucine, so alanine and isoleucine, GCA and ATC. Okay. Here's another table, common worksheet activity that you'll get in a classroom. Um, asking you to go back and forth between the amino acid, the complementary strand, and the original strand. 
And so the complementary strand is simply the opposite, or the base pair. So the opposite of C is always G. The opposite of G is always C. The opposite of C, again, is always G. So this is going to read um, the opposite. And then you want to go backwards. So the opposite of C is G. So this would be a G. This would be a G. This would be a C. This would be a C. Uh, whoops, a G. Right? This would be a T, this would be a C, this would be a C, and going back over here, the opposite of C is G, the opposite of G is C, the opposite of C is G. And then I use my amino acid table to figure out what amino acid GCG makes and what amino acid AGG makes. Okay, so there are start codons and there are stop codons. ATG codes for the amino acid methionine if it's in the middle of an amino acid sequence, but if it starts the sequence, ATG is called a start codon. Um, and there are multiple stop codons, and all of the stop codons are amino acid triplets that uh, are DNA triplets that code for um, an amino acid which actually cuts and ends the protein so that uh, it can be formed into an official protein and um, used in the body. So it's what tells the protein synthesis process to stop. We've completed the, the strand that we're trying to complete. Now we can go form it into a grown-up protein and let it go do its thing, live its best life as whatever a cell or protein it's meant to be, a hormone, a skin cell, a hair cell, um, whatever. Okay, so... Again, multiple different activities you can do. Here's a DNA base sequence. What's the amino acid chain produced? You get to use your table for this. Or here's an amino acid sequence. What was the DNA base um, sequence that made that? And there might be multiple options. Because more than one DNA triplet, or mRNA triplet if you're in bio 30, is going to code for uh, a amino acid. Okay, here's some questions here. So I'll let you pause the video on this question. Okay, and then there's the answer. Okay, genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is um, something that we're gonna start a very brief conversation in the next video. Um, so I look forward to seeing you in that uh, video. Thanks guys.